guess maybe the right words praise team, but thank you, praise team, every one of you guys for, yeah, give my hand, give my hand. It's, it's a big deal to uh, put your gifts out there, put your passions out there, let God use it. And so I just, I mean, just to point that out, thanks, guys, really appreciate it. And, uh, and why we do it first is I'll tell you what, I need it before I get up here to talk with you. I need, I need to just focus on who he is and how much he loves me and how much he loves you and how much he, he's done for us. Okay, and if, if we don't get that right first, everything is out of line. And then Pastor Will comes up with something like this. You see that title there? See that bad word? <laughs> Gossip. I know what you're thinking. Will, I thought we were in, in Colossians. That sounds a lot safer. Why are you doing that? Well, there's this pesky thing called the Holy Spirit, right? It's a wild one, and, and you don't know what he's doing. Well, some men's group, some women's groups, an elders group, conversations in my house, conversations with friends. This keeps coming up reading the Bible, uh, Brandy got into this book, then I got into the book with her, and it's taken us into uh, First Timothy, Second Timothy, some other places. This topic keeps coming up, and so I said, okay, Lord, do you want me to talk about that? So there's, there's, here's part way towards that introduction. Let me just say this. Um, I want to come to you in a very humble way. You know what I dislike? I dislike being a hypocrite. I wish I was never a hypocrite. And by that I mean, I wish I always practiced everything that I preached. Amen. Right? Don't you? And, but unfortunately, I fail just like you fail. And I've been in church most of my life. And this idea of gossip has been a, a staple of every church I've been in, including this one. Okay? And including in my house, and including in small groups I've been part of, and including in me at times. And so, but what I want to be, Lord, is help me to, to do what you say and not just read it and talk about it, but to apply it and to be transformed. And I want the same things for every one of you. So if you feel like I'm picking on you with this sermon, I am, all of you. However many are there, how many are watching online? Yes, I am picking on you. No, I didn't read your journal. Your spouse didn't call me. Your kids didn't call me. Your small group didn't report you to me. But if that applies to you, then it is for you. But I'm also talking to myself. And, and I hope you can see I say this in a humble way because I think God wants me to become more like him each day. And just because Jesus came and saved me from the pressure of having to be perfect to get to heaven doesn't mean, based on what we read in the Bible and what the forefathers of our faith have told us, that doesn't mean that you and I don't try to be holy because he's holy. That we don't try. You know, that's what Brandy and I talk a lot about. Well, aren't we supposed to try to be perfect, right? I mean, you're supposed to try to do the right thing. You're supposed to try to be holy because he is. And this idea of like, because of God's grace, I no longer have to make any choices and it's just gonna supernaturally float me into every right decision is not what the Bible says. There's still decisions to be made. So here's one verse. Okay, Will, you wanna talk about gossip. What's the word say about it? Proverbs. This is, right, scripture from a wise man based on an observation of a law along in full life. It says this, Proverbs 20, 19. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks so much. Uh. <laughs> Half of you feel really justified because you're like, I'm usually quiet and I'm really happy right now that I'm usually quiet because the loud mouths like Will are looking like idiots right now. Yes, yes, talks too much. If you made a poster, they'd probably put my picture on it. And they would leave room for some of you right next to me, right? And some of you know who you are. There's a danger in that. Well, the Hebrew word translated gossip in the Old Testament is defined this way. One who reveals secrets, one who goes about as a talebearer or scandal monger. A gossiper is a person who has privileged information about other people and proceeds to reveal that information to those who have no business knowing it. Amen. Clear as mud? Uh, I don't know. Mud. <laughs> so in one breath, I'm telling you, get to know one another. Be the family of God. Have fellowship. That's important and key. 
And then the other breath is I'm saying, now that you know each other more, you're going to be at, you're going to have uh, access to more privileged information about other people around you. Yeah. Is that a fair assumption? Right. Okay. Um, so there's a greater danger of gossip the more you know people and the more they pull back the curtains of their life. So this is going to, let's, let's try this too. Um, say this for me, say, oh man. Okay, say, oh man, one, two, three. Wait, one, two, three. Oh man. Right? How about no way? One, two, three, no way. One, two, three, no way. How about we're going to say, uh, that's right, okay, at three. One, two, three. That's right. Also, how about, oh, yeah, can you do the Kool-Aid, man? Oh, yeah, right? Can, I can't do that very well. Maybe you can help me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Why am I having you do that? Because help me out here because we can fall asleep with the data. And so the Bible says things like hallelujah and amen, and we don't always say that in the world, right? Like, you're not hanging out, right? We're not hanging out watching the football game, and they score the touchdown, and you're like, amen, yeah, right, give me, no, you're like, oh, yeah, or oh, no way. You got to be kidding me, right? So help me out with some of that. Let's wake up here a little bit. So help me out when I say something, and it's like an oh, no thing, like, oh, no, then you could say that. It'll help me out, or no way. Like, you got to be kidding, Will. If I'm saying something wrong, stop me. Okay, or, oh yeah, like I agree with you. Or you can say amen or hallelujah or a holy grunt, whatever it is that, that you prefer. Okay, yeehaw, see that works too. That's great. So Will, what, what, and this is what I'm asking the Lord. Okay, how is sharing information and gossiping different? So I was doing some research and I, I saw it written like this and I thought this was great. Two ways in which gossip is different than sharing the first way is, the first thing is uh, intent, okay? Intent, I intent. Gossipers often have the goal of building themselves up by making others look bad and exalting themselves in some kind of, as some kind of repositories of information or knowledge, right? So I know and I want to show you that I know. So it builds me up and it brings other people down. The second thing is the type of information shared. So gossipers speak of the faults and failings of others or reveal potentially embarrassing or shameful details regarding the lives of others without their knowledge or approval. Even if they mean no harm, it is still gossip. So it can still harm even if that's not your intent, right? And we find that. We find that it harms people. I notice a big thing too is you... You get involved in other people's lives and you make, you analyze and you use your better judgment to, to say this is good and this is bad. And it's the danger that we run into and I run into at times just to say, well, they're really doing this wrong, you know, or they should do this. And it's like, oh man, Lord, we, that is not how your people should be. The Bible uses another word, slander. Let's try one of those slander. What about, oh no, slander. Oh, no, right? That's the, but that's where you, you speak against. So the word slander means making a false statement damaging to a person's reputation. So slander is a type of gossip, but not all gossip is slander. Does that make sense? Your intent might not be to tear somebody down. If your gossip is intended to tear somebody down, then that is in the slander category. So check in the Bible about that. I'm giving you a lot of scripture here, but there is tons more. See, the key difference between gossip and slander is that gossip does not usually start with the intention of harming someone, whereas slander is a deliberate attempt to harm someone's reputation. So let me ask you this question. What types of gossip have you observed? Of course, you didn't do it, right? I know. Observed or heard or participated in? Like, like some categories. Like, what kind of gossip? What do you guys say? Help me out. Yeah, so maybe like in a relationship you're saying? Talking about other people's relationships, is that what you're saying? Okay, there's a good example, right? Somebody talks about someone else's relationship, how they feel about it. I don't know what they see in them, right? That kind of thing, or choices, like choices in life, yeah. Work? Work is a, work is a bad place for that, right? Not you. But you've heard about people that do that at work, right? Or school. You've heard people slander, but you didn't do it. At school? 
Yeah. People's kids. That's a great one. You talk about other people's kids. Did you see what they're wearing? Do you see what they're doing? What about that? In the family. family. Gossip within the family. Yeah. The closer you are together, the more it breeds this because you know about each other and you feel entitled to to state your opinion. Right? Right? Another, another, um, so, so tell me, am I off on this? Like, oh, no, or no way, or yes, or oh, yeah, okay. Sometimes what, what we want to do is we want to share our opinion on someone else's life. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe uh, sometimes we have information that's just so juicy and awesome that we're really proud that we have that information and we want to share it because I'm in the know. Yeah. Right? That's right. Okay. I got, yeah, and that's right. Two of you are getting it. This is really good. Okay. I'm waiting for something over here. That's why I keep looking at you guys. Okay. Now try this one on. Um, so, yeah. So sometimes, let's say, I know something about somebody in common. I think I'm helping them out by letting them know. I've, I've done this, right? I'm helping them out by letting them know a little bit what's behind the curtain for their relationship with them. Is that a no way? Oh, yeah. Say something. Come on. Am I off or right? No way. Okay. That's good. That's good. Connor's never done that. So there's some types of gossip. There's so many more. We can't cover that exhaustive list. But my prayer is that the Holy Spirit actually will will talk to you about the type that you've engaged in. Um, and, and stop it because the Bible is really clear that we should not do this and we need to, ex, you know, extract this from our culture and not build a culture around it. See, also we have a culture in the world that teaches and values critical thinking and it, cre- and it creates those who are critical in their thinking, therefore, right? Let me give you an example. See any online review, <laughs> Right? Everything wants a comment. Everything wants your opinion. You are called on, every one of you, to be an expert on everything. Is that true? Oh, yeah, that's right. Not every, yes? What about over here? Is that true? Oh, yeah, right here, right? Oh, yeah? Sweet. Look at this. It's working. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Think of online reviews. So everything is asking you to be an opinion. And everyone's opinion matters. And everyone's entitled to be offended, right? The offended part of you. You're so offended by everything. Do, do we see that? That's right, we see that. It's, it's encouraged, and I saw this in my kids as they grew more. Everything they were given was, was critical thinking based. What's wrong with this? Right? It's programmed in you from a young age, and so you begin to tear apart everything that you see. So everywhere that you go, and every person that you meet, you're like, ah, oh, I've got to find their kryptonite, because I've got to tear this thing apart. Because since I was seven, I've taken every thing someone's written, and I've torn it apart, and I've shown them where I agree, because I'm an expert, right? You're talking about the best type of roofing tiles. I'm not an expert on that, but I will be called upon to review an article about that, right, and tell you whether I think they're right or wrong. Stupid. I'm not an expert on your relationship, and frankly, no one cares what my opinion is. Sometimes not even the people closest to you care what your opinion is. Yet you feel obliged to the entire universe to offer it at every point in time. Right? See, and it's become so ingrained. Maybe you've observed this. You can help me out, see if I'm off base on this. That when you get together with someone, you always talk about two things. One, how busy you are. And two, you complain, (laughs) right? About somebody or something or whatever. You know, you want to complain about the government or kids these days or TV shows or boomers or whatever it is you want to complain about, depending on where you're at. Your common ground is the things that you dislike. Right? Right? (laughs) Even in the Christian church, we build our entire existence on what we don't like and what we don't believe is right instead of at times what we believe is true, which is what we should stand on, not what we're against, but what we're for. See, the problem with this all is is the the Bible. Now, along those lines with being a hypocrite at times, 
Every pastor, let, let, me, let me open the curtain here. Every pastor, I think, has this dilemma. They are called upon to speak truth every week. Every religious leader, every spiritual leader, they're called upon to speak truth every week. But, but they often fail to execute the truth they're teaching. And so with that, you become acutely aware of how much you need some of these things from God, which is his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness. And when I was on the other side and sitting in the chairs listening to someone else talk, I in every way needed his grace, his forgiveness, his patience, and his love. And there is a simple truth in the scripture, simple but difficult, is that, that we're told, right, that we should judge others in the same standard that we would like to be judged. So when I gossip about something that you're doing or I, or I pass judgment on something you're doing or I, I share your private information because I think it's not necessary that it's private. Do I want to be treated that same way? Do I want my relationships to be judged? If you judge, if I judge your child, do I want you judging my child? Well, that's a distant, far off problem. It is not. It is not. Okay? In 10 years of, of preaching in churches, I've seen people come against my kids and my wife a lot. Fact. Fact. It's a fact. Like, they've, you know, for different things. Oh, this, your son's wearing a hat. Oh. Your son's not, or your daughter's not wearing shoes. The kids are running around the church, right? We, we pass these judgments on, on one another, right? And in so, we, we gossip at times, and we, we come against that. The problem with that is if I want to gossip and I want to judge you, then I'm saying, God, I want you to judge me in the same way that I'm judging you. Do you see now how gossip is a little, gets a little deeper and a little thicker here? And then it goes on to say this. Now, this is probably, honestly, maybe more difficult than, than holding your tongue at times is this. See, I, I think that one of the other reasons why we gossip is because we're bored. And we've got nothing else better to say. We've got nothing else better to say, right? We're bored. We have too much time on our hands. If, if you look at history, right, and, and Randy teaching history, like you know this, at one point in time, we did everything, like you as a couple would do everything you could today to make sure you had food to eat and a safe place to live right, to keep from animals and the elements. And, and you didn't have time to really care about what Josh and Jackie were doing with their kids. You hoped you wouldn't die, you wouldn't starve to death, death or freeze to death. Fair? This is true? Oh, yeah, right? Cool. Okay. Now, technology came in, and now we spend half of our time on screens having an opinion about everyone else's life. Right. Will, you're talking against social media. Well... I think, I think it's, that's a problem. It's, it is a problem. Um, it, it is how we use it is a, is a problem. And so you see that. And what I found in, when Brandy and I were reading through 1 Timothy, check this out. He says this, 1 Timothy 5, 13 through 14. The context here is Paul is telling the younger Timothy, here's how you deal with widows in your, in your congregations, right? So, Besides that, verse 13, besides they get into the habit of being idle. It's like, don't, don't just take care of all your widows. Like, take care of all their needs. If they've got family and stuff, there's, there's times to take care of them and times not to. So he's talking about when not to. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, they, but also busybodies, which is the language that Paul uses for gossip, busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. You see, there's a biblical example of that, that point that we're just too bored and too much time on our hands. Another reason why I believe through prayer that we're, we're falling into gossip is we're hurt or insecure. So we use words to bring others down in order to make ourselves feel better. 
What's that? Or look good. Or look good, yeah. So it it's goes like this. In your mind, it's like he, he's, he or she's not so perfect, right? Or look at their life. I mean, right? Do you do this? Like your kids or your spouse, you have those conversations? Well, look at them. We're not doing so bad, right? We, we do this because we feel bad. We want to build ourselves up. I think that's another reason why we gossip. Another thing we, t- we touched on earlier is pride. I know something you don't know, right? 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 It builds you up. Guess what I know, right? You get together. I mean, come on. Have you been in a Bible study like that? You're like, okay, let's catch up. What all do you know that I don't know? And what do I know that you don't know? And how much of that should we really even share with one another? I mean, Will, can you give me an exhaustive list of what's okay and not okay to share? No. No, we, we have the Holy Spirit to lead us. And I think to catch us at times, we're to say, well, did you hear? Oh. Don't say it. You know what, Lord, you're right. That's not, that's not needed. So object lesson here. Do you notice I'm wearing a tie and a shirt? It's, there's, there's many, many reasons why I did this today. The last time, first of all, I think, I think for me, what I find is I start wearing Hawaiian shirts, and then like everyone starts wearing Hawaiian shirts. So I know I'm creating a new uniform or like a short button-up shirt. And there doesn't have to be one uniform in the church, but this is what happens, right? Because God, I believe, has called me forward to be a shepherd of the people in this congregation, to feed his sheep, to lead them, to love them, to correct them. And I don't always do a good job of it. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I do an awful job of it. And so sometimes maybe I'll just throw on a tie because someone might say, you know, I want to dress up when I come to church because I see that as an act of worship. And the other person's like, I don't see it. And guess what? This is the church for both of you. It is. It is because the Lord is here. His spirit is here. And you should be here too if you want to be part of that. And so if I can disrupt that by dressing different, the second thing is last time I did this, lots of people said stuff to me, but a lot of people actually talked behind the back like, is he going for a job interview? And then later, they're like, we were talking. We were wondering, are you, were you going for a job interview? And I thought, object lesson, perfect. I'll wear this. Did any of you talk about that this morning? Like, what's going on? I appreciate the fact that and not everyone could come talk to me, but I think that's what we have to learn. If we're wondering about something, if our curiosity, because of our la- relationship, has us wondering about something, let's not speculate. Instead, I might have just killed that, Linda. We'll see here. Um, instead, I think what, what's happened is, we forget to ask the simple question. Will, I don't want to speculate that you're interviewing for another job. So instead, I'll just ask you, why are you dressed like this? And my answer would be, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> and then your response is, it works. You got everybody confused. See, everyone's confused. Now next week, there'll be like a run on ties in here, and, and, then, <laughs> and then I'll be back with bare feet. Who knows what I'll wear next week? Keep you guessing. So... Um, See? So back to that pride. Now you know something that other people don't know. Will's not going for an interview. You don't have to go share that. There's, there's the pride. Uh, next, I, I want to ask you, what other reasons have you seen are a reason why people would, would gossip? I'll try this and see if it works. Yeah, it's not going to anymore. Okay, Linda will help me out with those slides. Um, what other reasons have you noticed for gossip? What other things have you experienced that I haven't listed? Because people don't have anything to say. They don't have anything to say, so they've got to come up with something. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We gossip a lot because we're not counting our blessings. We gossip a lot because we're not counting our blessings, right? right? And what do we love? We love to watch other people's lives play out on TV and screen, Right? And sometimes real life is juicier than that. And so we like watch, right? We, we want to watch and see. I think, I think that draws us in at times. What, what other reasons have you seen? Jealous. jealous. Yeah, jealousy. And that plays back on like, see, they, they don't have it all together. Yeah, any other reasons? You feel like you have to say something, right? Awkward, quiet, and stillness is, is difficult. So, 
How about uh, so-and-so's hair, right? You've got to come up with something <laughs> to say. I, I didn't point at him. I like it. Jealous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, have you seen the commercial where they're talking about how you become your parents when you buy a house, right? It's like an insurance commercial. I just saw this not the other day for the first time, and this kid walks by with blue hair, and there's, there's younger people like maybe in their 30s or early 40s, but, but they're very much dressed in the khakis and the polo shirt, and there's a guy trying to teach them to not become like their parents, and that's, that's one thing they do. They kind of judge the guy with the blue hair, young kid bl- walks by in the blue hair, and all three of them look like with mouths open, and the guy's like, we all see him. Stop staring. So I just thought that was kind of funny. It made me think of that hair. We are just ingrained, right, to, to judge. Well, here, let me throw another one that's even more difficult maybe for you to swallow on this one is gossip is not limited to just the one speaking. And this probably catches more of them. In me, right, one of my faults, guys, is I tend to uh, want to people please and to peace keep. So I fall into getting passive and my wife and kids suffer from that all the time and you guys do too. So something God's working on in me is to call it when I see it and to be honest and bold and direct in love. This is a growth area for me. And so this can be very difficult, but gossip is not limited to just the one speaking. Engaging in gossip as a hearer who says nothing is still wrong. And so that should sting a little bit. That, that should kind of burn because I think most of us, even if we can hold our tongues, we run into that. We say nothing when it's happening. Proverbs 17, 4 says, an evildoer listens to wicked lips and a liar gives ears t- to mischievous tongues. That's kind of strong, right? Evildoer. Like even if you don't say it, You're perpetuating evil by allowing that to to go on and say nothing. Okay, well, I know. Let's let's try to, this is getting uncomfortable. Oh no, right? Oh me. Amen, like in a bitter way, right? So, okay. Is gossip really that big of a deal? I mean, really. Everyone does it, and usually you don't even know that I gossiped about you, and so it doesn't hurt your feelings. Yeah, well, interesting note. Everything that I, you know, studying and praying about this, this really popped out. You see, Ro- Paul was writing a letter to the Christians in Rome. And listen to this, it's, from, it's recorded in Romans 1, verses 29 through 32. And, and it, it's a little small, so you might want to make a note if you're taking notes and look at this. Um, they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, Greed and depravity. Okay, we're talking about bad stuff here. Wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. So here's how. They're full of envy. Bad, right? Bad. Right? Say bad. Oh, that's bad. Okay. Murder. Bad, right? Strife. Bad. Deceit. Bad. Malice, if you even know what that means. Bad. They are gossips. So right in the middle of that trash sandwich is this gossips thing. Like, that's in there with murderers? They're gossips, slanderers, God-haters? Insolent, arrogant, and boastful. I wish I had a British accent. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. That's in there too, guys. Disobey their parents and slander and murder people. It's like in there in the same thing, like God-haters. This is serious. They have no understanding, right? This is why they do it. They have no understanding. They don't get it. They got no fidelity, no love, no mercy, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. Wow. Gossip is a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And very, very harmful. Okay, yeah, but, but really, doesn't gossip just hurt their feelings? Right? You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never... But names will never hurt right. me. Right. Don't, don't people need to just get over it? Yeah. 
Isn't, isn't that their problem? Shouldn't they get thicker skin? No, no, not, not, a, not according to this. Words are powerful. As a matter of fact, see, I'm throwing tons of scripture at you, so make, make notes. Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. See, the, prob- the big problem, guys, what we're running into, the meat of this is that gossip and slander, unbridled words separate people. Gossip breaks trust and confidence. Gossip separates friends. It divides and does not unite. Proverbs 26, or I'm, I'm sorry, I can't speak right. Proverbs 16, 28, a, a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. This is where it's so damaging. When I counsel with people who have been hurt, this is a reality that I've learned over time. The truth of what happened really doesn't matter. What really matters more than anything is your experience of the truth that happened. Your experience. So even if it's just words and you didn't intend to hurt somebody, when you break their heart, when you break up friendships, you've done serious damage with your words. Even if you said it in a passive or joking way or in a passive aggressive way, you have hurt feelings, you've, you've created disunity, you've broken up friendships. This is so damaging. The biggest problem with gossip and the why we have to get this out of our lives is because it destroys unity, it separates. And unity is so important among us in Christ. I mean, We can say this is the most important thing, but one of the last things that Jesus prayed for before he went to that cross is that we would be one, right, with with the Father as he is one with the Father. The whole part of this is abiding in Jesus and connecting. And when we insult, when we gossip, when we slander, when we tear down instead of build up, we create divisions between us. And who gets in those divisions? The Satan, the enemy. He takes every opportunity of your sin and mine. He's done it even this week, right? To get in, get his little claws in there and create and, and sow discord and disunity and drive us farther apart. See, here's an example. Do you remember when, when Peter, Peter was a Jew, didn't eat things like pork. There was a lot of dietary restrictions he had with the law. And now a new time had come. Jesus had been resurrected, right? Ascended to the Father. And now, how are we going to deal with these Gentiles who didn't have the Jewish traditions and the Jews who had all these traditions? And them getting along is pretty much the whole New Testament, right? Especially all Paul's letters. And so we see things in there like he gives Peter a vision and says, it's okay if you eat some, some bacon, dude. Because even though it might not be good for you, science has found out, maybe eating a little bacon with your brother creates unity that is so far more important than your dietary restriction. Right? I know. I know. Says the couple who just, you know, got a pig. So, so there you go, right? Um, uh, is that gossip? I don't know. Oh, it might have been. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. Forgive me, Lord. Um, another example. The, the Jewish council, they met, right? Because some Gentiles were like, we want to be in. And so they got together, right? The pointy heads got together. What do they need to do to get into the faith? Do they need to become Jews first? Are we going to have to circ- circumcise these adult men? Will they have to go with all these dietary restrictions? And they fought and they argued and they prayed about it. And the Holy Spirit gave them this truth. It said, basically, there was a couple dietary things that they had to observe, these Gentiles. And then the second thing they had to do is stay away from sexual immorality. And then the question is, how can they tell Peter, eat some bacon, and these guys don't eat things sacrificed to idols? I think the answer is simple, unity. You don't want your Jewish friend coming over for sacrificial steaks. It's going to make them feel uncomfortable. Because they don't eat them. Right? You didn't want your Gentile brother to be judged for having a bacon cheeseburger, Right? And so God went towards unity, that, that we are the body. We work best together. We're complete when we're together, not when we're separate. If you don't believe it, how's COVID thing going? That's fun, right? Ooh, sure. Isolation and madness out there? Shoot, I mean, this disease is bad, but what's worse is the way we're all acting, right? 
We're going crazy because it's just not how we were created to be. Jesus said this. This is one of, one of the things in the book of John that he told his disciples. And for me, that should leave the taste in your mouth of what he wanted us to do and be about after he left. And he said this. This is from John chapter 13, 34 through 36. John 13, 34 through 36. He says, a new commandment I give to you. Why, why is that significant? Because these guys were so stuck on all these old commandments. He goes, I'm about to go to the Father and mix things up. This is the new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I know it's easy to say that one, uh, one thing we run into is a bad definition of love, for sure. Because sometimes loving is saying hard things. But loving is never saying hard things about people to other people. Do you see the difference? If Lowell's like, Will, you know, you should put a shirt on because you're scaring children and causing the women to have impure thoughts, right? You might have to call me on that. But you shouldn't go to Jim and say, did you see Will? What a jerk. Do you see what he did? That's not loving. Sometimes loving isn't just saying, yeah, do whatever you want. And sometimes loving isn't saying, wait, you guys are all, all engaged in gossip and it's starting to make me feel uncomfortable. And I said nothing. Instead of, wait a second, Will, I think that might, we might be getting into an area of gossip. Could that be more loving? Say, oh no, oh yeah, what do we think? Is that more loving to say, oh, Casey, dude, I think, I think I'm crossing a line into gossip let's stop or I feel like you're crossing that right is that more loving than saying nothing because would it be loving for me to us to talk about Ross like that you know what would it be loving I didn't do that Ross just messing man but but we should love one another and by this all people will know that you are my disciples but if, if you came into the church, I think what I've seen um, is you get involved in, in like a, you come into a church and you, the first thing you do is try to connect, right? That's the word we use. So you get together with a group of people in a smaller group and try to talk about it. And if their culture is that they gossip, then to fit in, what do you do? You gossip. But then you said, here, Hope, you had observed, it never happened to you, but in the workplace that people gossip. And then at church, if they gossip, then how in the world would anyone know that we're his and not just the world's? Because at work, that's just what we do. All of us cubicle mates gossip about accounting, right? This is what we do every day. And when we go to the women's group, all we do is gossip about the teenagers or whatever, you know? This is not taken from factual events. I'm just throwing in some stuff out there. But what if you came into that place and someone was like, well, did you hear about it? And everyone's like, I don't think we should go there. And they stopped. Wouldn't that be nice? Then we'd be different. Right? Then we'd be different. See, God puts people in my life, like my wife, to remind me to be different instead of just conform because that is the tendency, Right? And I think that's the tendency for all people who want to be loving and gentle and kind is don't rock the boat, don't say anything, don't confront anything. But that is not always loving. And when we love and when we really do it like Christ says love, then we're going to stand out. And, and to take it even further, this is what Paul is saying to, to the church at Ephesus. Ephesians 4.29, he says it this way, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only for what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So there's your measuring tool. What I'm about to say, do I want to say that, first of all, am I saying it to the person that needs to hear it instead of saying it to you about them? Right, we get that difference? If I'm talking about you to her, that's unnecessary, right? I need to talk to you about you. But the question is, when I'm talking to you, if I'm going to say this thing I feel compelled to say, will that build you up? Be careful. Build up isn't, isn't make feel good. 
build up is, is to strengthen and to put into a better position, to create a better foundation. So sometimes building someone up is coming against what they're doing wrong. And in the brotherhood of Christians, we can do that with one another. That, and we can say, wow, you know, if, if I see something and I feel compelled in my spirit to share with you or to talk about it, would you do that? Please, after prayer, if God wants you to share it, but share it with the person. Don't wait till later feeling bad about it and then gossip about them. And clearly, I think you know if you're told something in confidence, just being an honest person is you don't share that that thing that was shared with you in confidence. And if you struggle with that, then ask God to help you make better decisions. He's not going to stop it, but pray that he would shut your mouth at the right time and that he would convict you if you start down that road. Amen. That we would look at it and say, wow, what I'm about to say or do, is this in any way building these people up in the brotherhood? Because the failure of our church in the world to see people know and love and worship Christ is we don't work together. We're still hiring more Polish people up front and expecting them to reach everyone's hearts for God. The prettiest people with the prettiest voices, and then there's crazy people who aren't afraid to say things. And we're putting all those people up there, and we're putting lipstick on the pig, right, which we can now eat. And, and we're, we're putting them up there, hoping that they're going to save the world, when really we were supposed to be the body, but the, hand, the right hand's not talking to the left hand because she made a comment to, so, to the foot about her skirt. And so we've got no body. The friends are divided. So do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Christians, how do we live? Paul, here's how you live. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what's, for helpful, what's helpful for building up others according to their needs. Is that, that's like a hard pill to swallow. See, our, our tendency, see there, there's, that's right, good job. Thanks, Mom. Um, <laughs> Our tendencies is to tear down, to gossip, to judge, all those things, those tendencies we have. Do you understand that they come from the inside of us, out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks? You're all, and me, we're all insecure. We, we really are. We're, we don't believe what God says about us. We've taken so many blows over time that it's hard for us to believe that God would really love us unless he's really taken you through quite a journey you're not there yet, and I think you're in process, and I think some of you have probably gotten farther than others because of what God's done in your life, but what he has to do is to get us to stop gossiping, he's got to heal us from the inside. He's got to teach us because our tendency is because of our hurt place, because of our insecurity, because we don't feel loved, we don't feel accepted, right? We speak in hurtful ways, desperate ways. Is that right? Help someone say something over here. Yeet? Yeet works. Yeet, right? Hurt people, hurt. hurt people, hurt people. It's it's a saying and it's true. So I want to present this to you. After praying, here's what I need to give to you. Not only talk a lot about gossip, so now what I hope honestly is when you're together that you hold each other accountable. Because the picture that God's given me, if if I'm the shepherd and you guys are the sheep, right? That's the way that this is the metaphor. We're not a team, right? We're, we're not the team. That's not the metaphor he gave us. The picture is the shepherd. So all the sheep are together. And the shepherd's job is to get the people together and to lead them to where the good food is and to lead them away from the danger and protect what's on the outside trying to destroy them. Do you see that? What I have to do is show you where the good stuff for eating is. That's what this is. Gossip is bad. Protect you from those who would harm you and keep you close together. Stop gossiping about each other so that you can trust one another, so you can love one another. Get you together and then in the herd of the sheep, I, I've never been a real life sheep, but I know that there's some bumping and some activity that happens within the mix of the sheep that keep them together and in line. So now that I present this to you, gossip bad, here's different types. Let's not do gossip. The Lord really doesn't want us to do gossip. If we're going to do what the Bible says and be his people, we can't have this in our life. So I'm giving this to you. Now take it all the places that you go and apply it and help one another out. Amen. Will you help one another out? Okay. Okay. But here's the other thing for you individually. To simply tell you never gossip and just hold your tongue is, is an insufficient help. I think the antidote 
for gossip is love. And all my prayer and all the study, the antidote for gossip is love. Receiving the love of our Heavenly Father, that's the only way that you get healed on the inside out. Okay? Receiving the love of God, really receiving that, holding on to it so that we can feel secure in who we are. And then from that, only from that, then we can share love. If it's not in you, you don't have it to share. The Christian life would be an act of being in the presence of God so he fills you, overflowing, so that you start spewing love on everyone around you. And if you did that, you would not want to tear down your neighbor. And and just to show you that Jesus is serious, Matthew 22, he really has said what I've come to know is the law of God, and it's this, and I... And he said to them, he being Jesus, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How are you doing? How am I doing? Am I loving God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind? If I'm not, that's what the church word is sin. We fall short of what God has for us. And the second is is like it. We shall love our neighbors as ourselves. Are you loving yourself? Are you loving your neighbor? And if that was a checklist of three things that you need to be doing, gossip would, would make it so you weren't checking off any of those three things. It's not loving your neighbor, not loving God, and not loving yourself. So how do I love? Maybe take this and meditate on this a little bit. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 say this, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, underline, underline, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. See, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Here's a paraphrase for that. It says love, and you find this in the message, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. It doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It, It doesn't revel when others grovel. Takes pleasure in the flowing of truth puts up with anything, trust God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. So Lord, here's what I ask. Lord, I I ask that you would guide us, strengthen us so that we can make better decisions when it comes to gossip, so that our lives and the way that we interact would be loving our neighbor. That no matter what's happened before this day, love Mm. says today is a new day in which I have a chance. I have forgiveness for my sins, forgiveness for my shortcoming, and today is a new day in which I have a chance to make better decisions strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless my friends, my family here, Lord. Unite us in you. Unite us in your spirit. God, you have done all these good things, and Lord Jesus, you have bore my sin and everyone here so that we can walk new today and choose not to go back to those sins. We're free not to go back, but we're free to move forward, Lord. And because we're forgiven, Lord, remind us, Holy Spirit, remind us to love others and to forgive them because you're patient with me that I can be patient with them. Lord, thank you for the millions of blessings in every one of our lives. Thank you for our very breath. Thank you for not being caught off guard with what's going on in our lives right now. 
Lord, I know that you're going to transform your people, Lord, and do it. Do it, Lord. Continue in the work you started in us. Come, hold the lens, your lens over our life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.